Good afternoon. Uh, Richard Edwin McCallum here with uh, Officer Paul Tier of the Regé de Police de Memphis Magog and Executive Producer Joanne Michaud. Uh, Mr. Tier is going to help us understand a bit more about the Magog Police Department today and uh, we have a few questions for him. Thank you very much, Mr. Tier, for coming to our interview. It's a pleasure. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about the Magog Police Department? Do you know how old it is? And Not exactly. I tried to find uh, when it was uh, founded. Yes. And uh, we didn't find anything. So, okay. But we think that the, the police station has uh, about 100 years. About. So, the police station itself would be a historic building, is that uh, true? Yes, yes. We were with the, the fire, <coughs> was a fire station mm -hmm. and the police in the same building. And where is the police station located? Now? Yes. Yes, on uh, Soutière, Chemin Soutière. Yes, yes. and yeah. do you have the address of that? S 61, okay. Chemin Soutière. And it can like always that. be reached with 911. Yes. Sure. However, is there a general telephone number that people can reach you for uh, an, an inquiry that is not an emergency? Uh, yeah, sure, at 819-843-3334. Uh, uh, and they could then ask for you at post 247? Yeah, sure. Because sometimes we need some information from the police, but we don't want to call 911 because yes. that's a criminal report, is it not? Yes, well, for an emergency only. Right. Can you tell us uh, about the geographical boundaries that the Magog Police Force serves? Okay. Well, we um, we serve uh, four uh, municipalities. Yes. Uh, Austin. Yes. Magog, uh, Saint Catherine, Dadley, and uh, Offord. Okay, as well as Magog City. Yes. And um, how large is that population base? It's just an estimate. Well, about. Uh, 33 uh, mil, mil, uh, thousand people. 33,000? Yes. But yes. in the summer it goes up to uh, maybe 50,000 or 60. That's an important note. That also yes. means that the Lake Memphis Magog is within your service and if there is a crime or something committed on the lake or around the lake, yes. that it's Magog Police Force, yes. right? Yes. We have a boat and we have a uh, uh, Skidoos. Yes. <laughs> Skidoos. And uh, all, all the things we need to, to go in the, the woods and uh, on the Right. Lake. Do you also have um, what they call police on bicycles in the spring, summer, and fall? Uh, in summer only. Yes. Yes. But the, uh, the uh, answer to uh, police calls, they're not there to, uh, to f for the, the tourists or okay. uh, they are there to to answer to the calls in the um, downtown. Okay. Mainly, mainly on Main Street. Of course. Yes. How many police are in the force? Uh, we're uh, about 45 okay. policemen, men and women. Right. And uh, about uh, 70 uh, employees. In, uh, 70 employees. Yes. So those would be administrative staff who help yeah. you serve the, the public. Exactly. Now we're going to ask you a few personal questions. Okay. What inspired you to join the Montreal Police Force? And the sorry, <laughs> the Magog. Welcome to Community Radio. We make a mistake every That's day okay. over here. Um, what inspired you to join the Magog Police Force, and how long have you served? Well, uh, it was in 1988, and uh, at that time I was working uh, at the Metropolis uh, Ascot Lennoxville and uh, I didn't have a, a permanent uh, employment. Right. So uh, I had the chance to have a, a permanent empo uh, employment Right. Uh, f faster in right. Mega. So I decided to come in Mega. Well, I guess what I'm really asking is, you know when we're all little kids and one kid wants to be the fireman and one, pe <laughs> one wants to be the cowboy, one wants to be the Indian and one wants to be a policeman. Yes. I wanted to be a psychiatrist but ended up seeing a psychiatrist. <laughs> my, my question to you is, yes. if you were a child and you were interested in police, law enforcement and like that,
Okay. What made you make the decision that you were going to spend your life doing it? Because it's a dangerous job. Yes, but I we don't think about that. Not not much. Uh, I mean, at you that personally. Time. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yes, and personally, um, I think uh, it was the 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 chance to help people. Right. Mostly. Okay. Uh, yes. And uh, I, when I was young, I was I wanted to be a, a secret agent, so it was in the same uh, <laughs> same way, almost in the same way. So uh, I decided to become a policeman. Well, the police do really serve as the municipal intelligence source as well, do they not? Yes. Yes. Um, that's good. <laughs> Are you allowed to speak with us without mentioning any specific people? Or occasions, any cases that you've been involved in that have been particularly memorable, but without giving up the confidentiality of the people you serve. Okay, well, uh, maybe uh, it was uh, one one day. Uh, uh, well, there was a, an homicide yes. uh, of a child. That was, I think, the, bis the biggest thing that happened. I wasn't. On the on that uh, on the scene crime, I was near, yes. but uh, it happened before I came at the, the station. Uh, I was on the, the night shift, and right. uh, when we arrived at, uh, I think it was uh, 11 o'clock in the evening, and uh, they just found the, the little boy just a mm, few minutes after, and we uh, we protected the the sign cream uh, right. uh, all night. You yeah. were making sure that the crime scene remained okay. pristine so that when the investigators could come the next day that it would not be affected for the investigation. Exactly, yes. And that must have been very powerful as well as, for example, the police are called to every accident we yes. have. You must see some truly horrible things. How do you deal with that as a person without getting what we call post-traumatic stress? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm kind of lucky. Uh, I didn't have too much of those uh, uh, events, uh, yes. Events, yes. Difficult to, uh, to, to cope with. <coughs> right. And, uh, but uh, I had some accidents with... Uh, sure. Yeah, persons who uh, uh, died or... Uh, but it was not uh, that... Uh, I think uh, uh, dramatic. Right. In right other word? words, you were not personally affected by the event. Not 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 that much. Right. Yes. But uh, sure, we we still uh, think about it for of a course. few days. And uh, but I think I, I was lucky. I, I didn't have anything uh, very. Uh, how can you say? Strong that affected you yes. to the point where you couldn't do your job. No, that's it. That's, that's very good. And um, I would also add perhaps that you receive training as police in how to deal with these type of traumatic situations, do you not? Uh, yes, we, we have that kind of training. But uh, I think we, we are it's not exactly training, but uh, we have we are prepared to mm -hmm. to face the, those things. This spring, there was a horrible uh, weather event where we ended up having like thirty and forty cars in a pileup and people stranded okay. out on the highways. How did the Ma Magog Police Force deal with that particular event without destroying confidentiality of those involved? Well, um, well, it was it happened on the Sotis Quebec uh, okay. uh, territory. But sure. We, we went to give a give a hand to, to the Sotis Quebec. Because well, it, it maybe that's too, a good thing to explore as big. well. The Sûreté de Quebec, or yes. what we call the Quebec Provincial Police yes. Force, yeah. are the provincial body that you work with. How is the relationship of the Magog Police Force? and the uh, surete. How, how do you coordinate investigations and like that? Well, we have uh, uh, each uh, territory to, to cover and uh, for that there's no problem and if we need help we can call them and if they need help they will call us. 
and uh, we have a different level of service. Right. We, we are a, a number one. We give the, the base of services uh, mm -hmm. for police. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so to Quebec has, uh, I don't know exactly, but I think they can they cover all sure. things. Uh, so I think it's uh, a level five. But it's different from uh, well, I imagine region if, to if there was like a terrorist event or something like that, the Sûreté de Québec has liaisons with CSIS, uh, CIA, FBI, yeah, exactly, uh, and that you would act as a liaison between the municipal force to them and anyone else that they bring in an investigation. Exactly. If we have an homicide, uh, we don't take care of it, it's, uh, it's an, a level two or three, I so see. we don't touch that. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna help right. to Quebec, but it's not our, uh, our case. Right, and it's important for you, I guess, as the Magog Police Force, to know what best to cover and what not to cover. Yes, and that's on paper, that's uh, uh, clearly course. on the paper. Of yes. course. Um, and uh, I think now we can move on to our third section, which is, can you tell us a bit about how the Magog Police Force is involved in the community with uh, things like Blood Bank, uh, Bank Alimentaire? How is the Magog Police Force uh, working with the community in these aspects? Well, uh, we have a, a blood donor yes. uh, clinic uh, each year, and uh, it's going to be in June, so uh -huh. less than a month. And uh, we also have um, another thing. Uh, I just it's don't okay. Remember, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay. Well, this year we received the um, uh, golf. Tournament. Oh, that's uh, nice. Of the Federation, uh, Federation des Policiers du Québec. Right. Federation des Policiers Municipal du Québec. Municipal Police. So that's in benefit to help community aid. Yes, that goes to the Souper du Partage. Right. Uh, Jean Pelchat. Okay. So this year we received that tournament here. It's the first first time. So you must be very excited about that. Yes, it's a big. Uh, and I presume I that's going to be advertised in Le Reflet and all these yes. local outlets that we can be involved if we wish. Yes. Great. Um, one of the things that occurred to me, and I don't know if you have it, but do you have any type of intern uh, idea where a young man or a young lady might be interested in working with the police, but yet hasn't had the formal training, but would like some experience on the job. Is there anything like that coming up in your force? Uh, yes, but it's difficult to, uh, to bring uh, a lot of people who would like to, to do a shift with a policeman. So, because of the insurance and insurance, the dangers, yes. Uh, but uh, we receive, uh, each year, we receive uh, uh, students from uh, Technique policière. Oh, uh, from the Seja uh, de Sherbrooke. Yes, and they come to to make a shift, a uh, day shift, an evening shift, and a night shift with. Uh, the so policeman. in a way, that is an intern pro yes. project that people can learn a little bit more about the force yes. before they. That it's very expensive to go to university or police yes. school. So if you're studying all those things and it, the work is not good for you. Yeah. Yeah, some some uh, students uh, change their mind and they change uh, Certainly. Their, uh, their studies. Well, it's it's a very difficult thing to study and it's a very difficult thing to be. Yes, so we do we do that uh, each year. Great. Um, this is a question that I came across because what happens in our new media and the twenty four hour news cycle is we are often seeing um, incidents where all over the world a policeman may have overstepped his authority. Okay. Maybe someone has done something they shouldn't have done from the police side to a citizen. And I think what happens is when citizens see this on their television 
and then they go out and drive to, say, the local store, and something might be wrong. It could be a brake light, a headlight, or anything like that. Okay. They're stopped by a policeman, and they might be thinking, well, you know, doesn't this policeman have anything better to do <laughs> than stop me? From your perspective, that is the police perspective, what are some protocols which citizens could employ when they're at interacting with a policeman? For example, say you stop me in a traffic stop. Okay. What is the correct way for me as a, as a citizen to respond to you as a policeman? Okay. Well, the, the, first, the first thing I would, I would say that uh, you have to be polite. <laughs> Stay polite in any time. So okay. that will help you. If you just just like you said, uh, you don't have anything else to do, then stop me. Uh, maybe you're gonna have not trouble, but uh, we don't like to uh, okay to, uh, to hear that. Well, how about <laughs> things like uh, body language? Does direct eye contact with the officer help? If I'm looking at you directly in the eye, as opposed to uh, jiggering with my keys when you're. <laughs> Do you see where I'm trying to get to here? Yes. Well, you have to be uh, I, normal. It's uh, only uh, we we do our job, and uh, some people try to, uh, to 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 tell us what to do, or uh, that's not the, uh, the good thing right. to do. Right. So just be uh, sincere. Just be uh, normal. Right. Uh, answer to the questions. You have the right to uh, to ask why you have right. been stopped. And uh, the policeman has to say it. Okay. Why? Why right. he stopped? He stopped you. So, okay. Uh, but just take what he gives you. If it's a, a ticket, well, take it. You have the, the right to uh, to go to court and, and debate that in yes, court, yes. not at the time no. of in investigation. Yeah. But if you stay polite, you you can have some uh, ar arguments. Well, I think what happens with a lot of people with their much. cars <laughs> is it might be something like a brake light is out yes. and they say, oh, I just got caught. That means I'm going to have 24 hours to fix my brake light and they're annoyed because they may want to spend that on some hockey or something else. Yeah. And basically, it becomes a defensive thing, you know. It's just a brake light, etc., etc. Yeah. But how about this? Let's say that a complaint has happened. Okay. Um, maybe it's as simple as, as someone having a dispute with a neighbor or a friend. How do you expect a citizen to act when he's reporting that to a policeman? Well, it's hard to say, but you, you have to uh, just say the truth and not put more than you, than you know, than you see. Um, so just tell what what you you really know, uh, what you saw, uh, the facts. We need the facts, right? And uh, a lot of people uh, hide some stories, and we don't know all the truth. And we we have to take uh, an action okay. uh, with what we have. So uh, sometimes uh, we we make mistakes because because the people won't say it. In all, other words, all they know or uh, all we need to know. When, when, when I'm telling you the why I'm calling you, I should tell you everything that happened in that yes. interchange with that person rather than just saying, well, that person did this, 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 and that, and I didn't do a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah a lot of, um, a lot of time, we, we only have this half of the story. Right. So it's hard to, to, to have a good, uh, make a good job on that, uh, that kind of call. In the recent uh, investigations by uh, Comey in the presidential uh, problems they're having in the US, they said that this particular officer always wrote an immediate memorandum with any exchange that he had with the president, etc., etc. Okay. Would it help if, say, I had a problem with a neighbor to take five minutes before I called the police and write down in, as, in, in, on a piece of paper what the incidents were 
before calling you rather than yeah. you having to write it all down. Yes, if it's not an, an emergency, uh, right. it would be a good thing to, to write, write down on paper uh, what you have to say. The so time it happened, where something. it happened, yes. Yes, it's, it, would, it would help us uh, a lot. Okay. Yes. And then the final on this one is what is it what has happened when someone is under arrest it's already gone past the investigation now you're arresting the person okay what is the best way for me as a citizen who is being under an arrest who has yet to be proven guilty to react with the police during that event okay i would say um the the thing that we have uh, the the big the biggest problem is uh, people don't obey to uh, the policeman. Right. When you're under arrest, you have to obey, and even if you don't understand why, you, you have to to do what the so policeman asks. So basically, from you, they that person who's being arrested needs to submit completely to the police. Yes. Until they are being processed and can see their lawyer and all of that. Yes. For example, and this happens quite often, someone will be restrained with uh, handcuffs or something yes. like that, and a common complaint is that's too tight. Don't say that, even if it is too tight. Yeah, well, you, you can ask for it. If you do it in a calm way. It could, could be very uh, painful. Right. Yes. Sometimes we 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 make we make mistakes like well, of anyone. course. Yeah. But uh, but you have to to obey and uh, because we we never know to to who we are uh, exposed. Uh, we don't know if the person is a violent person. Right. Um, the person knows the person that we arrest knows that that uh, that person that person knows that uh, he or she is not violent. Exactly. But we don't know it. Right, and we uh, we have to uh, to um, uh, consider them like dangerous that until you know better. Yes, so maybe so the they citizen have should guns. take it personally That's that right. the officer is arresting them. Yeah, just realize you're under arrest. You're going to be processed, and then you will have a chance to see a lawyer. Uh, yes, which is your right, and you will have your phone call. Yeah. And if you're in the car and your handcuffs are too tight, after you're in the car, you might say, these are quite tight, yeah. and then it's up to the officer's discretion to say, well, you'll have to wait until we get there, or... Yeah, sometimes we, we cannot do all they, they, they ask, but... Um... In a perfect world, there would be no crime. Excuse me. Sure. Um... This is a question that is also interesting, I think. Are there now cameras in the police cars for the Mag Magog Police Force? Uh, no. Is that coming? Uh, it's, um, we would and, like to. And part it's, two, is there going to be cameras on the officers? Yeah, it's very uh, <coughs> complicated. Okay. Yes, it's difficult to um, uh, gérer. Okay. I don't know how to say it. Uh, uh, Jere. To handle. Okay, to handle. Handle. I understand. To yes. Manage, yeah. it's, it might be also quite expensive. Yes, expensive. And as soon as you use a camera to make a, a, a proof. Yes. Good, well, you have to to show what you uh, you you have on your camera from uh, all all day. Okay. And you have to keep that. In so it somewhere. involves a lot of updating of information uh, on yes. the part of the officer yes. during the duty. Yes. And it's very expensive. Expensive, and uh, you, uh, if you make uh, about, uh, let's say, uh, three arrestations yes. uh, during the day, well, you have to, to show that, and that's, uh, it's not for the good case. Right. The, so uh, you have to, to expose all those... Uh, 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 police work right and that's a, a quite uh, difficult to, well to it use. is the 21st century and as this technology I remember when cell phone phones first came out yes. they were eight thousand dollars 
And as the technology <laughs> develops and becomes more proven, then I eventually guess that Magog, along with everywhere else, will uh, will will update to that technology and will deal with it then. Well, the technology technology is there, but uh, it's the the courts, the courts and yeah. the legal system. Yes, they they ask a lot. From the, the policeman for the to prove something, and uh, that's that makes uh, the the thing not easier. Okay, and now we get to the really easy part of the interview. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me because we at Radio Web Fray, okay. we always have a musical component. Okay. When we're doing our programs, so can you tell us three English songs that you like? It yeah, could be well, anything. Yes, but um, I like music. Okay. So I have a lot of... Uh, <laughs> okay, just tell us three. Okay, uh, I would say uh, maybe the first would be from uh, John Mayer. John Mayer, yes. yes. And it's um, Stop This Train. Okay, yeah. what is the so title again? Stop This Train. Stop The Strain? Okay. Yeah. And uh, why do you like that particular song? Well, uh, it talks about uh, life is too short. Right. Something you basically like that. don't stress out over things. Yeah. And he's a very good <laughs> guitarist also. Oh yeah, sure. Are you uh, musical I also? Uh, I would like to. <laughs> okay. Oh, I started playing guitar a few years ago and I, I stopped. I'm not good enough. Don't but worry. I have to, uh, to, we all to got practice and practice. I, we all have guitars in our house, you know, that's part of it. I prefer listening to the music. But I went to, to see a show in April 1st at, uh, in Montreal. John Mayer? John, yes, a very good show. Excellent. Yeah. So we'll use some John Mayer with you. Can you tell us another song? Well, um, I could say maybe uh, from uh, Jason Mraz. Jason Mraz, he's yes. modern, yes. Yes, and uh, one of... Any uh, particular track by him, uh, for album? Yes, well, uh, the album, yes. I think it's the last, but I'm not sure. The new Jason Mraz? Mm, yes. Okay, and, uh, we'll source that. Maybe a few, um, well, a few years ago now, but... Uh, did, he, did he have a hit that you liked? Yes, um, it's a long drive. Okay, we'll look for that. Yes, okay. And a third song? Third song, uh, well, um, I thought maybe about something uh, uh, from Summer, Summer Song. Okay. Um, it's from uh, John Cougar. Okay. And uh, it is um, uh, Under the Boardwalk. It's Under a, the no, Boardwalk, yeah. yeah, that's a great track. It's a, yeah, it's a, an old song, but yes. uh, it's a good version of... Uh, of the song from the John Mayer, uh, John, not John Mayer, John Cougar. Okay, and I think he now changed his name to John Mellencamp because his yes. original, you know what happened? I his know. manager was okay. the manager of David Bowie okay. and in those days you weren't allowed to have your real name, they gave you a star name. Okay. Like David Bowie was David Jones before the monkey became David Jones so he became Bowie from the knife. With John Mellencamp okay. The manager, who was named Tony DeFries, said, You know what? You can't be Mellencamp. I can't sell records with that. I'm going to call you John Cougar. And you know oh, yeah. what? He hated that name. <laughs> okay. For like 10 years, everywhere he went. Hey, John Cougar. Wham! The guy would go and deck everyone who called him that. Okay. I didn't know that. Well, you know... Radio Web Fray, right? We're always having a story. Is there anything you'd like to add today as a message, perhaps, to citizens or to your family? Would you like to say hi to your wife and kids? Or oh yes, I would like. I don't know if they're listening. They will be listening, but uh, yes, I would like to salute my uh, my wife and my two kids. Well, two kids, two big big kids. What are their names? <laughs> yes, uh, Marie Pierre yes. and uh, Francis. Okay. And my wife is uh, France. Okay, and you live in Magog now? Yes. That is fantastic. Yes. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Mm, I don't think so. Okay, stay tuned, folks, because executive producer Joanne Michaud is now going to come up and do a similar interview with Officer Tier. Thank you very much for your service.